My name is Ed Brink. I'm the Division Manager for Training and Technical Support for Meyer Supply Company. Today we're going to talk about how to troubleshoot flame rectification systems. This procedure is going to go in hand with the technical bulletin that we have online. This procedure is going to be the same for most rude furnaces except for the 96V, the 97V, the 98V furnace. The only thing that will be different on the RGRM furnace would be the flame sensor voltage. So we're going to talk about the most common things that we see when it comes to flame sensing problems. We want to be able to check the polarity of the power supply coming in, the phasing of the secondary of the transformer, the flame sensor voltage, the chassis ground, and we, then we want to be able to measure the actual flame current going to the control board. In order for a flame rectification system to work, the control module is going to send out an AC voltage to the flame sensor. The flame voltage is going to stay there until we have a flame. Once flame is established, the AC voltage is going to travel through the flame to burn our ground and it's going to create a microamp DC signal. That DC signal is going to travel back to the control board. The control board is going to sense that signal and verify that we have um, established flame. Once the control module sees the proper flame signal, the burner will stay on. If it doesn't see the proper flame signal, the burner will shut off and go into a soft lockout for flame failure. There are a bunch of things that could attribute to a bad flame signal. One being that the power supply coming in is incorrect. Two being that the phasing of the transformer is incorrect, meaning that the hot and common wires off the secondary of the transformer are incorrectly mounted on the control board. We could have low sensor voltage on an older root furnaces. There's a Molex connector between the blower section and burner section that can create an increased resistance, reducing the voltage down to the flame sensor. We could have a bad chassis ground, and we could just have a bad control board or a um, flame sensor. So we're going to go through the steps on how to troubleshoot and check the flame rectification system, and we're going to start with the voltage supply checks. So in order for the furnace to work correctly, you have to have the right power supply coming in, and you have to be at the right voltage. So in order for us to verify that, we're going to take a meter and select the voltage AC voltage scale. And we're going to check our power supply coming into the furnace between the black wire and the white wire of the plug. Or if you don't have a plug, wherever L1 and L2 on the board lands. So once we apply power to the furnace, we're going to get a voltage of about 121 volts AC. So we verified that we have the proper voltage. What we have to verify next is that we have the right polarity. Having the right polarity means that the black wire is actually connected to the hot terminal in the control or in the circuit panel. So what we're going to do next is we're going to leave our lead on the black wire and we're going to remove our neutral lead and we're going to connect it to chassis ground. It should have the exact same voltage, in this case 121 volts. So what this is telling me is that the black wire is connected to the hot leg of the circuit panel. So we verified that we have the right polarity. Most new furnaces now will, will be able to auto detect if you have a polarity issue and you'll get a code stating that you have a polarity problem. So the next thing we wanna do is check the phasing of the transformer. And the phasing of the transformer is gonna tell us that the common of the transformer and the neutral of the power supply are in line with each other. Also L1 and R of the transformer are in line with each other also. In order for us to check the phasing, the first thing that we need to do is check the secondary voltage of the transformer. In order to do that, we're gonna go between common and R on the low voltage terminal strip, and we're gonna measure our secondary voltage of our transformer. In this case, we have 28 volts AC. So we verified that we have the correct voltage going into our transformer. We verified that we have the correct voltage coming out of our transformer. The next thing we wanna do is to check the phasing of the transformer. In order to do that, we're gonna take one lead of our meter, we're gonna stick it on the hot wire that we've already established coming into the furnace. The other lead of the wire, we're gonna to go to the R terminal of the low voltage terminal strip. And we should read the difference between primary voltage and secondary voltage. In this particular case, we're gonna read right around 93 volts. Here we have 92.6 volts. So this is telling me that the phasing is correct of the transformer. The next thing we wanna check is the sensor voltage. In order to check the sensor voltage, I'm going to take one lead of my meter and I'm going to stick it to ground. The other probe, I'm going to go right up to the sensor and I'm going to measure the voltage right at the sensor. In this case, we have 97 volts. This sensing voltage is always available 
sitting there waiting to establish the flame. So we verified that we have the correct phasing, we have the correct polarity, and we have the correct sensor voltage. When there's a flame established, that AC voltage will push through that flame, creating a DC current. That DC current has to travel back through the chassis ground in order to get to the control board. So one of the tests that we want to do is check to make sure that we have an unobstructed or no resistance in our chassis ground coming back to the control board. In order to do that, we're going to shut power to the furnace off. We got our meter on resistance. We check our leads that they zero out. In this particular case, they zero out at 0.2. We're going to stick a probe into the grounding connector of the furnace and we're going to check to make sure that there's no resistance coming back. In this particular case, we got about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 ohms of resistance coming back, which tells us that we have a good electrical connection. And we're just going to check different places throughout the system. Again, if you have a bad connection, make sure that you scratch the casing to make sure you get a good electrical connection. Anything over one ohm to one and a half ohms of resistance, you need to look into that. It could be a problem with a loose burner, some corrosion within the system. Um, we're gonna come back to common on the transformer. That should be grounded. Here we have a perfect electrical connection. And then we're gonna check between the neutral wire coming in to make sure there's not a problem on the power supply side. So we verified that we have a good chassis ground for that flame current to travel from the burner all the way back down to the control module. The next thing we want to do is we want to check our flame current. In order to check our flame current, we need to put our meter in microamps DC. We need to remove the flame sensor and we're going to put our meter in series with the flame sensor, making sure that we have good electrical connection between the probe tip and the spade connector. Then I'm going to take an alligator clip and I'm going to clip the other lead onto the flame sensor. So we're putting our meter in series with the flame sensor so we could read the current that is going through that system. I want to make sure that my probes don't short out when I'm doing this test. Uh, next thing we want to do is we want to get a call for heat. In order for us to get a call for heat on this furnace, we're going to jump out between R and W. Once I verified I have my alligator clips in the right location. I want to turn the furnace on. All right, so we're going through our ignition, pre-ignition, draft inducer motor is running. Once we verify vent pressure through the vent pressure safety switch, we should give a signal to the control module to create spark, open up the gas valve. We've got flame. We've established that we have the correct flame current of 3.5 microamps. The ignition module is going to stop sparking, the gas valve is going to stay energized, and the system is going to take off and run. If for some reason we did not have the right flame current, for example, if I were to open up this circuit, the furnace would sense that there is no flame current coming back to the module and turn off the ignition cycle. So we verified that we have everything we need to have good flame. We have the right polarity of the power coming in, the right phasing of the secondary of the transformer, the proper flame sensor voltage, a good chassis ground, and we verified that we have the correct flame signal coming back to the control board. If we don't get the right flame signal coming back into the control board and we have the correct sensor voltage, we most likely have a chassis ground issue or a control board issue. If we don't get the right, if we have the correct current coming back to the control module and it doesn't prove flame, then most likely we have a bad board. So in conclusion, in order to verify and check the flame sensing circuit of a furnace, the first thing you need to do is verify that you have the correct polarity of the power coming into the furnace, meaning that the L1 wire is actually connected to the hot leg of the circuit panel. Next thing you wanna do is check the phasing of the transformer to make sure that the common of the transformer and the power supply of the transformer are connected properly to the control board and that they're not swapped. Next thing we want to do is verify that we have the correct sensor voltage going to our flame sensor. Then we want to verify that we have a good chassis ground so that their flame signal can travel back to the control board. Once we verify that we have a good chassis ground, we actually physically want to check the flame sensing signal. 
if our voltage to our flame sensor is low, then we may have a resistance somewhere in the circuit between the power supply board and the flame sensor. If we have a high resistance on our chassis ground, that's going to create a low current coming back to our board, we need to find and rectify that situation. If we have the right flame sensing signal coming into the control board and the control board can't prove that there is flame, then the board is bad. If you have any other questions, please refer to our technical bulletin online. Thank you.